Our team at Curtin University Perth have published a paper which shows that scientists' understanding of how the brain works has been based on an illusion. When you are part of a magic show and the magician seems to predict what cards you'll choose, do you believe this is true? Was prediction involved? Or did the magician use sleight of hand to set it all up? Just like a magician's trick, this article brings together fascinating research to reveal that the impression that the brain predicts the future is an illusion. The appearance of prediction comes from the brain controlling its present moment experiences in a sophisticated way. People have been fooled by appearances for thousands of years. The world looks flat until you can see its curvature from a higher perspective and it looks like the sun rises above a stationary earth. But of course, the earth is rotating around the sun. The new paper shows how our brain's apparent ability to predict works very differently when you examine people's behavior from a new perspective through the lens of perceptual control theory. I've been aware of perceptual control theory for many years as an elegant theory of human behaviour and psychology, but it was only recently when we identified key studies that looked across a range of different activities to what appeared to be prediction going on by the brain. But actually what was going on in these studies was the control of present moment experiences being updated by continuous feedback in a way that accounted for the delays and the complex properties of the body and the environment. Ask most neuroscientists how the brain works and they'll tell you it's a prediction machine. They claim that in order to admit the right response at the right time, the brain calculates, remembers and updates its estimates of the probabilities of the millions of future events that could occur. These theories assume that past events are the best predictors of the future, as though human beings follow a long causal chain like a Rube Goldberg machine. These machines are so impressive because they're so unlikely and they take painstaking hours to set up right. People are not Rube Goldberg machines. Things change in the moment as people strive to control what matters to them. Fortunately, a few well-designed research studies reveal this. They show that prediction is not required or even helpful for many of the most important everyday skills and activities. The activities in these studies are actually examples of perceptual control, a law of nature that can go easily unnoticed. It's a solution that our nervous systems have discovered that is much simpler than calculating probabilities to make predictions. Take the example of intercepting a moving object like a baseball. Accurate computer models can achieve this not by predicting the future location of the ball, Instead, the models account for the fact that a person's perception of the ball and their movements are happening at the same time. Therefore, if we keep a perceptual variable constant by adjusting our movements continuously, we successfully intercept the ball. It pays to keep our eye on the ball. An object interception has been solved without prediction using perceptual control theory in lots of different scenarios for frisbees and toy helicopters and even in computer games like Pong and Breakout. There's also this lasting assumption in neuroscience that the brain needs to predict the results of its own actions so that it can carry out a behaviour successfully. This seems sensible but again key studies challenge this. One study set people the task of keeping a circle in a target on a computer screen by moving a computer mouse. Yet the circle was disturbed by the computer, so the user had to push against the disturbance to keep the circle on target. These pushing away movements were then displayed on the screen, but the disturbance pattern was set up so that the mouse movements to counteract it spelled out the word hello on the screen. And then a second participant viewed the screen and was convinced that the first person had planned to write hello, but they hadn't. It wasn't predicted by the person who wrote it, nor was it even noticed by them as a consequence of their actions. 
Another study evolved robots within a computer simulation environment to head towards a light. They found that the most effective robots didn't make predictions of the effects of their actions. Instead, they adjusted their actions on the fly, just like the baseball fielders. Imagine the dilemma of a slalom skier. Why should their brain be predicting what causes their movements, their own limbs, gravity, the bumps on the slope, when it works to instead make continual adjustments to keep on target? One study showed that a simple robot programmed using perceptual control theory kept superior balance without any capacity for prediction. Maybe the most telling finding of our review was the steam engine governor. This 100-year-old device is essential for keeping the speed of a steam engine constant, despite variations in load and variations in furnace pressure. It works by making the steam valve smaller when the engine goes too fast and larger when it goes too slow. The desired speed is set by adjusting the weights of the balls that spin round and raise up to open the valve via a lever. It's a clever little device, but it doesn't predict anything. It can't compute probabilities. It just controls. Yet a group of researchers modelled how the steam governor worked using their theory of prediction, using probability estimation, just like people do for the human brain. When people do this for the brain, people conclude that the brain is a prediction machine. But that can't possibly be the conclusion for the steam governor. Anyone can see how it works and the governor knows nothing of probabilities, patterns, data or the future. The prediction is again an illusion. I think this article is important because it brings us closer to a more accurate understanding of people and other living things. It explains what control is and if we understand control we can understand control in its various guises from the harsher aspects such as coercive control to the positive aspects such as empowerment but also collective control how we come together as a society and as groups to, to make big changes. This theory is used across those fields from sociology, psychology, robotics, philosophy etc and education um, and it takes a real active constructivist stance to human nature rather than what I think is a very passive stance if we regard the human brain as a prediction device. C control as a, as a theoretical notion as well as a applied and practical notion seem to mesh with, with less steps. Uh, less, so there's this parsimony to PCT that makes it very attractive to students like myself but also to people that I'm sharing this knowledge with. Control, really, it makes much more sense to put control as the the primary core of cognition than prediction and so predict although we might have predictive capacities those predictive capacities are the product of a control process rather than a predictive process but why is all of this so important it's important to have accurate theories of behavior perceptual control theory is used to help people regain control of their lives through therapies and training. It also supports robotic technology and advances in AI. Paradoxically, it can also help us understand when the brain is generally making predictions or failing to do so because it's busy controlling for something else. It can help us rise above our wants to truly envisage a way to deal with a challenging future. If you would like any more details about the studies or how perceptual control theory works, please see the text below and the full article.